I'm so glad you guys are able to join us. I have such a surprise for you today. <laughs> we are going to get to have a conversation with Dr. Ella Bell Smith. That's yeah. right. I am so excited because she is a woman of power uh, between the work that she's done, which I'll let her tell you a little bit about. But I think it really ties into our discussion on women and power. So tell us a little bit about you. For the women who don't know you, give us a little background. First of all, I am delighted to be called a woman of power by you. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, um, as often I don't see myself as that. Um, I am a professor. I'm an mm -hmm. academic. Mm -hmm. I'm a professor at the Tuck School of Business mm -hmm. at Dartmouth. It is one of the top business schools in the world. Um, I'm a consultant, so I consult to Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, to senior executives. I write. I used to do a blog in Essence. Um, I have two books, and I continue to write on and off. And my most happiest joy is that I am the founder and president of Ascent, leading yes. multicultural women to the top, which is a leadership development program in partnership with Tuck. And um, some of my church sisters are involved. Yes. Carolyn Henderson mm -hmm. is director of coaches. Monica Wood is PR. Yes. Um, so I'm bringing people to New Hampshire because I go back and forth because the work is in, God is some, for some reason, has placed me in New Hampshire to do what he wants me yeah. to do. So. I, th I think it's important when you say you don't see yourself as a woman of power. I think the women that are most powerful say that because of their humility. They just, they're doing God's work. They don't see it uh, the way people, other people see it. Yeah, so. I, don't, I don't see it. I guess I should say uh, I'm also a newlywed. Yeah. So I have to add that, you know, I'm so career oriented mm -hmm. and, and, and work oriented that it's like, oh, yeah, you know, there's something much more important than all of that. My hubby. Yeah, life. Life, yeah. you know, my hubby. I'm finally at the stage where power is learning to be a wife. Yeah. And, and that's a whole on. different lesson. Is it lesson. first year anniversary? We had our first year anniversary. Yeah. The girls were in the wedding, you know, we had more kids in the wedding, and I was real proud of that. Yeah, so. well, at the end, we're going to let you share a little bit about yeah. that story, because that, you know, marrying your childhood sweetheart, that's kind of, yeah. especially later in life, I think some women think it never will happen, but it can happen. If you just, yeah, well, that's another story. That's another story. That's we'll another save story. that for the end. That's another story. But today, we're going to talk a little bit about power. We've been um, really studying within this Bible study women in the Bible as it relates to power. Um, and then the second week, we started to get into God and God's power. But I wanted to take just some time for you to give us your perspective on power and women. Uh, I don't think we know how to use our power. Yeah. Sometimes black women, particularly black and white women, mm -hmm. I think we think that power is emulating how men demonstrate power. Mm, yeah. Authority, dictatorial, mm -hmm. um, this whole business of the angry black woman, you know, yeah. um, how we have to assert ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, our role models historically, we had strong mothers, strong mm -hmm. grandmothers. Um, if I look at women like Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm. they were extraordinarily powerful. Yeah. That's power. Yeah. You know, sojourner truth. Now that's power. Yeah. Um, to stand up into that type of, 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 of mutilation of, of blackness in our society and to stand strong. Yeah. That, that is, in my humblest opinion, that's power. But I think we get it twisted now. Mm -hmm. um, I think we think that power, some of us use our sexuality as power. Yeah. That's, you know, that, that can get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> just, you, we've got examples in the Bible. Right. Um, and some of us think that being subservient uh, is power. Mm -hmm, always, not. always mm -hmm. helping, always, mm -hmm. always doing, not using our voice, mm -hmm. um, not using our wisdom. So I know all the things that I think that get in our way, not believing in ourselves. Yeah. I think first and foremost, we don't believe we have power. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get angry about that yeah. and not recognizing that we do. 
We just have to learn how to tap into it. Right. In the Bible study, that's actually one of the things I really say. I say that people will abuse what they don't understand. Right. That if we right. don't realize right. the right. power that right. we have, right. then we can't access it. We nope. can't tap nope. into it. That we are not able to understand uh, our PowerPoints. Um, and then I think for us as women, influence um, is a definition of power, and, and they're related in a very special way because we don't have to have a position or a title to have power. Um, I know that some of the work that you've done, you can That's pretty so much true. say that. What would you say? I pretty much would say that. I mean, you know, I think power, first of all, is within us, mm -hmm. and it develops. It's a stage. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when I was at certain universities, I've been very blessed to be at very elite universities. And mm -hmm. I remember the racism, the sexism, and the outward hostility I felt. And um, when I was at MIT, I remember that one of the senior um, faculty members came in. And he came in, and he was kind of aggressive and hostile. Mm -hmm. He was like, I've got something I need to tell you. Mm -hmm. And he was standing over me. Mm -hmm. So I stood up. And he said, no, no, I want you to sit down to hear this. And I was like, excuse me, this is my office. Mm -hmm. um, you're not my father. Right. You have something to tell me. We need to look at each other eye and eye so you could tell me. And that threw him off balance. Mm -hmm. But he needed to be thrown off balance. And at that time, I had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Either I was going to get angry and act out, you know, and start slamming. And it was like, no, that was not time and place. Yeah or to let him know that I wasn't going to be subservient to him. Right. If you want to give me feedback, I'm open to that. And I didn't cross my arms mm -hmm. or anything like that. But we need to look at each other to understand that we're breathing the same air. Mm -hmm. I didn't give my power away. Yeah. Um, I didn't act like a scared little bunny rabbit. You know, oh, master, what, you, what do you have? <laughs> what you got to tell me? Right. It was like, no, 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 no. You, you, you know, you're not going to do this in an abusive way. Right, right. I think sometimes we strike out, particularly when the power authority, the person in authority, mm -hmm. the person who we've given our power to, mm -hmm. if you will, comes at you and you go into this subservient role yeah. or you go in this hostile mode. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. you can't let someone take your power away. And then on the flip side of that, you just can't give your power to anyone. Right. So how do we own our power as godly women? What can we do to really own it? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, I count to three. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right, you know, do I go off? One, two, three, one, two, three, Lord, talk to me. Um, that's a good question. And there's a lot of different, different answers to that, I think. Um, I think owning our power, first of all, you've got to know who you are. Yes. You've got to be clear. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be proud of who you are, no matter how hard life has yeah, been. Identity. I think people look at me and, oh, you dress so well, or, you know, you, you, know, you do this, and we've seen you in Essence, or mm -hmm. we've seen you at Black Enterprise, and, mm -hmm. you know, so they get caught in all mm -hmm. the trappings. Mm -hmm. They don't understand I'm adopted, mm -hmm. I've been abused, I was with an, in an alcohol a relationship for 10 years, mm -hmm. as you know, mm -hmm. with a, a, a very, um, traumatized yeah. man who was an alcoholic. Um, people don't know those those inner sides. Mm -hmm. You do. Mm -hmm. Bishop knows. Um, yeah. And I think when I don't, when I'm not clear about who I am and what I'm worthy of, yeah. when I let that pain define me, right? Yeah. when I let my hurt define me, yeah. I can't get in touch with my power. It's kind of you know. like saying you, we are not what we've been through. We're not, yeah, exactly. And sometimes I think we get so caught up in what's happened to us, we forget <laughs> the person you. that God has created Thank us you. to be. And we forget, too, that through all of that, as a baby given away, as a, as a, a young woman, as a, a child, mm -hmm. with an emotionally kind of a mother that could be emotionally abusive, my father drank, um, they were loving parents the best way they could be. Yeah. And I've made peace with all of that. Mm -hmm. But I got some chops and some muscles from that, too. Oh, yeah. I got perseverance. I got courage. I yeah. got determination. Yeah. You know, I got strength. Mm -hmm. um, I learned how to be marginal, mm -hmm. how to really function in these 
very elite white male environments. Mm -hmm. I'm a girl from the South Bronx. Right. I'm from the hood. When the hood was the hood, okay? <laughs> you know, the real hood. The real hood, you know? So the real, and my parents were, my mother had a sixth grade education, my dad had a seventh grade education. Mm -hmm. You know, I got 390 on the SAT scores. And I'm at Dartmouth, I've been at Yale, I've mm -hmm. been at MIT. That's not nothing to do with me. That's all God. Yeah. God put me in those places. And I understand that the other part of my power is that I'm a vessel. Yes. It's not about Ella Bell. Don't believe the headlines. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't believe the headlines. The headlines tell you one story. And I think sometimes we get caught up. You know, we look at the Beyonce's. We look at, you know, the, the, the actor. Oh, I want to be like her. You know, they I don't know the cost. The headlines. You don't know the cost. You don't know the sacrifice. And that's all headlines. That's what you read. Mm -hmm. But that's not who that child really is. Mm -hmm. So for me, getting in touch is knowing who you are, understanding that God wouldn't put you anywhere that you can't handle, mm -hmm. and that God gave you a voice. We have to learn how to use the voice. Mm -hmm. And power is not about body or manipulation or blinking eyes and, yes. and, and showing how, how smart you aggressiveness, but power is wisdom. Power is wisdom. That's straight up Proverbs right there. Go it's ahead. Power, Tell us a little more about that. Power is, is wisdom. You know, you say you're reading Belle. You're mm -hmm. looking at Belle the movie. Yes. And she's so gorgeous. I love her outfit. I love it. I just, I saw Belle. I, was, I saw the hotel room. I was like, ooh, I love it. Um, She was thirsty for knowledge. Yeah. You threw out the whole movie. The whole movie. Mm -hmm. She's in there going through, you know, her uncle's stuff, just pouring through, going and stuff she got no business going into. Right. But she's thirsty, for, and she wants to use that knowledge. She's also recognizing how privileged she is. Because mm -hmm. she's seeing what's happening to other black folks. And that's the other thing, too. It's a sidebar. Part of power is recognizing that when you are privileged, your power means that you've got to do something to give back and help somebody. Oh, absolutely. That you can't just exist you where can't, we are. Yeah, you just can't yeah, suck it all yeah. in and, oh, I'm powerful, give me more. Right. It doesn't work like right. that. For such a time as this. Oh, girl. Yes. Is time as bad as it is? Yes. You have to give up your time. Mm -hmm. Power is giving. Mm -hmm. And Power reaching is back. Power is going to take it and reaching back and pulling forward. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I love Oprah when she talks about giving. Mm-hmm. She's powerful in that regard. Mm -hmm. And she, here's a wonderful example. Mm -hmm. She's taken all her hurt and all of that and turned herself into a powerful icon. She's mm -hmm. used all her wounds mm -hmm. yeah. and, and turned herself into a very powerful icon. The thing that's very interesting is she once said, you know, I'm, in my African village I'm working with, I'm giving every child, every little girl a doll. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. You know where I'm a going doll. with I this. Do. You know where I'm Your going with this. Dolls. You know. And I said, I got a village. I don't have an African village to give dolls to. And this voice said, yeah, but you got a church. Mm -hmm. So I started with Cameron and Carson. You did. Okay. And they still have those dolls. You know, I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to give them an American Girl doll. And I want it wrapped beautifully. Mm -hmm. I want it gorgeous. I want them to feel like princesses for a minute. Mm -hmm. And I started going, and people will tell you, it's like, oh, that's a cute little girl over there. So I'll ask other women like Sonia, mm -hmm. um, like, Sonia, whose little girl is that? And she starts laughing because Renaya has a doll. Yes. You know, so I started picking, you know, okay. You, the, 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 so every year I try to give an American girl, about a couple of them. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it last year because we were paying for the wedding. Um, I gave them as wedding presents to the kids that were in the wedding. But the reality was I wanted little girls to feel like a princess. Right. For right. a minute. I don't care how, why are you giving them that expense? They just gonna tear those dolls up. Right. That's no, not the don't. point. The point is they open that and for a second they get, that's power. Right, but you know for me as a kid, I'll share this story and we are kind of on the sidebar, but I think it's important. When <laughs> I was growing up, um, of course I, I grew up in the 60s, mm -hmm. I'm telling my age a little bit, but um, one Christmas uh, I wanted a baby doll, but I wanted a black baby doll. And one of my girlfriends, um, 
course, it was hard because my mother growing up couldn't get black baby dolls. They didn't right, really that's right, make that's them. That's right. Um, so there were no Particularly dolls. down here. Exactly. There were no dolls that looked like me. Yep. Yep, yep. And uh, so yeah. for that Christmas, I actually got a black dancing dance arena. It was a little mm -hmm. doll where you hold her crown mm -hmm. and she would dance around. And they made them in black and white. And um, we had a discussion with my best friend who got a white doll. And I had a black doll. And there was this whole discussion over my doll's better than your doll. <laughs> and, but it, the undercurrents of that and being able to identify with who we are made such a difference for me uh, as a little dark-skinned girl. That's right. You know, understanding understand. that there are dolls that look like me. And now, yes. let's talk a little bit about Belle. When we look at the screen, um, there are, are actresses that look like us, that we have really come full circle as women um, with being able to have images and yes. aspire to uh, the, the Sojourner, Sojourner Truths, um, but also to uh, the, the women on the screen who are using right. the power that they have right. for good. Uh, and what our responsibility yep. is as women in being in touch with, as you say, knowing who we are, yep. um, knowing how to reach back and empower other women. And I know in a sense you talk about that a little bit. So let's, let's talk about how do we do that. I think first of all, recognizing that another woman's not your enemy mm -hmm. and not your compet competition. Yeah. Particularly women who are in a corporate sec segment, mm -hmm. the sector, mm -hmm. uh, the private sector. Competition and kill is, is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's brutal. And I think when we get in these environments, we look around and we see we're the only one or maybe there's another one way over there and mm -hmm. one over there and it's like, okay, I'm gonna get mine mm -hmm. and off with her head. You got to recognize that ally having allies, power is in numbers. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Power is showing up. I've got your back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to support you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. And we spend a lot of time. Ascent is about managing your visibility because mm -hmm. we have women that are highly visible. Um, loving yourself. Mm. You're good. You're bad, and you're ugly. Right. And we, you know, I've written about that in the second book. And knowing that the sisters in this room mm -hmm. are your allies. Mm -hmm. The other thing we talk about is having a whole life. Because you can't oh, have power good. if you're off balanced. Yes. Now you go back to Belle. Mm -hmm. All right, when they told her, well, here's the keys to the house and you're going to be the auntie that's going to be all by herself. Mm -hmm. Here's the role model, the older white woman who's all by herself. Right. Who takes care of the house and whatnot. That's why, because we, we can't find a man that's going to be good enough. She looked and she said, wait a minute. She needed a life. Mm -hmm. And she was willing to manipulate behind the scenes and do some other things, right? You know, mm -hmm. like, here, take me to him until, you know, the uncle found out. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, having a whole life and, and, and fighting for that. Mm -hmm. Fighting for someone um, to be with you. And it doesn't always have to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I think having a whole life and being grounded with, with people that love you mm -hmm. is a, a way that system. you can use your power that can actually ground you and love you and, and be with you. I remember when you found out that I was with this, this, this person who had an alcohol problem mm -hmm. and you looked me dead in my and you said, where's your faith? Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. I, when did you have such little faith? Mm -hmm. You didn't say, you didn't laugh, you didn't go off in the corner and snicker. Um, Addie knew, your mother knew. Yeah. And your mom and I talked about that. Yeah. And she said, you know, he's a good guy, but don't you get too caught up in this. Right, you deserve And it. I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I loved your mother. Yeah. I loved that. She was so sweet. That was a woman who knew power. Yes. You know, dress the part. Let's not forget about girls. You got to dress a little bit for the power, too. You know, we, but that's not what you want to talk about, so we won't go there. But well, looking good um, doesn't hurt. Looking good know. doesn't hurt. You got to have your power, your statement piece and all that. But the reality of it is you've got to have people around you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're alone, we isolate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. We isolate ourselves. Um, we don't reach out. Mm -hmm. You know, my godchildren, I love. You know, I love the little girls in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I love to be a support and anchor. They keep me grounded. Yeah. So having people, my husband, oh God, what, what a blessing. Mm -hmm. He keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. He hasn't said, don't use your power. He's, you're the most powerful person I know. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Right. Encouraging. He encourages, supports, mm -hmm. puts his suit on, goes into our little faculty events. We were at one. We're the only, you know, there's one other black couple up there in us. Yes. Okay, and there's like 90 of them. You know, he comes in the room and, you know, he's just as proud. And I'm like, look at my boo. He can hang, you know. Um, having people that can support you as you are in, right. in, in who you are. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is power. People can see when you have power. Yeah. There's, a, there's not a cockiness. There's not an arrogance. It's not, um, it's not a huffiness. There's a groundedness and there's a wisdom that Belle had. Mm -hmm. and a determination. She, she just yeah. a confidence. You know you're right. right. She knew she was doing, she was helping her people. She was, and she realized these were my people. My mother was, wait a minute. Right. When she connected the dots, it was like, wait a minute. These are my people. I'm, 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 you know, my father was white, but guess what? Mm -hmm. These are my people that are being treated like this. I have to. So I think her having the groundedness of knowing who she was and having support, mm -hmm. having the resources, mm -hmm. knowing how to utilize those resources. Because she had resources that the other girl didn't, which nah. was interesting because yeah. here as the, the black person, she didn't have to marry into money. She had the money. Daddy left her well. Exactly. Uh, so that, to me, it kind of gets us to the end of what we're going to discuss as we get ready to close. But just um, her father leaving her an inheritance it makes me think about our father leaving us an inheritance. <laughs> you know good, where I'm going. That's good connected <laughs> dots there. That's good connected dots. Just that um, when we, we don't know who we are, we don't realize we have an inheritance that is that rich in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and what it costs for us to be brought into the family. Just how all of that relates to us owning our power as women and being secure in who we are in Christ. Um, because we've been through a lot yes, um, but, and it has not defined us because all things no, have worked together for our good. Yay, yay. And he's continuing to get the glory even in the yuck parts of our life. And so even when yeah. we don't think we have power, we just have to tap into the one who has the power. It's so true. And once we do that, anything is possible for but us. But see, the thing to me, um, two things come to mind. Understanding that you're a vessel. Right. I understand that with all my craziness, whenever before I teach, before I give a talk, any of that, I'm over in the sidelines, Lord. I'm your vessel. Mm -hmm. And he, thank God, thank you, he always shows up. Mm. I don't ever have a written speech or mm -hmm. anything in front of me. It's like, okay, what you want me to say? Mm -hmm. Checking in. Checking in. You know, like, it's, who needs what? And I'm always amazed when people come up to me and say, you're in a trance. Mm -hmm. We didn't even, you know, you, you're connected. Or somebody will come up to me in, in tears. Mm -hmm. I needed to hear that. More than one person. That changed me. That mm -hmm. transformed me. That inspired me. So remembering that that is the connection, mm -hmm. yes. it's not me. It's what he does with me. It's oh, what right. God does. It's what Jesus does. It's understanding Jesus as a role model. He was an advocate. Mm -hmm. He was a change maker. Mm-hmm. When I look at my role as a consultant, as a teacher, and he was a teacher, he's my role model. He's my role model. Mm -hmm. That to me is, is the groundedness of um, being a Christian woman, mm -hmm. of knowing. And, and the other part is, I think sometimes we get stuck and we think, and I hope this comes out right, we think that just sitting here at, Every Bible study, every church, every, every, every church event, and just Jesus, Jesus, help me, help me, yeah. help me, help me, is going to be, oh, crystal ball. You, it just, it's going to knock on your door. Yeah, no. It's not going to happen like that. You have to go out there. You've got to have the courage to go after it mm -hmm. and ask God, is this what you want me to do? And open doors. I am amazed at the doors that the Lord continues to open for me. 
But you gotta have power. courage. You gotta have courage. The faith to go that the gives door. you the courage to go through the door, because the doors are there. And I think as women, that's one of the ways we don't mm -hmm. own our power. We don't. Um, we don't see who God has created us to be and be able to step through and occupy the land that God has already given us. Oh, we get there and us. we go. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. You like know, I, I don't know if I. I don't know. know. I can't do this. Ooh. Yeah, the fear of success. I remember when Tuck came to me. Mm -hmm. I left. MIT and I came to UNC Charlotte, a school you had never heard of. Mm -hmm. And everybody told me, you'll never go to a top 10 school again. Mm -hmm. Your career is over. And when Tuck came to me, mm -hmm. I went to Bishop and I said, I have an opportunity to go to Dartmouth. It's in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, he said, God has opened a very big door for you. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're not ready? Are you sure you're not going to go through? Mm -hmm. That's all he needed to say. Yeah. You have to walk through the door. Yeah. There's goodies if you walk through the door. There's one other thing. Understand that power comes with sacrifice. Yeah. Bell sacrificed a lot. She almost didn't get the man that she married. Mm -hmm. She was almost disowned by the family. She had resources, but she would have lived in very isolated, lonely mm -hmm. life. Mary was so blessed. Mm -hmm. She had Jesus, mm -hmm. but my God, what she paid for at the end. Mm -hmm. I think we need to fully understand that power is often about sacrifice, mm -hmm. not just giving back, but blessings come with responsibility. Mm -hmm. yes. Power comes with major responsibility. Yes. It's not just, oh, I'm powerful. Mm -hmm. There is pain and hurt and constant work involved. But the benefits. But the benefits. So you just can't sit way. back licking your chimes, oh, I want to be power and blink, blink your eyes. Yeah. You, need, you need the wisdom. You need the self-belief. You need to have the faith. You need to do the work. Good. And the work is constant. Yeah, continual. It's continual. Yeah. But when you are doing it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. when you're doing it because that's what God has put you on this planet to do, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. how sweet it becomes. Yeah, that's a good place for us to stop right there. Exactly. I just want to say, as you guys are, are listening into this conversation, um, God has some doors for you. He's got some doors that are ready for you to walk through, for you to occupy to be able to own your power. Uh, there are some circumstances that you think that make you unqualified, but I'm no, here to tell no, you no, that no. that's what qualifies you to walk no. through the door. Yeah. And that is what power really is. I want you to tap in, make that connection. We talked about tightening those cables. I want you to do that so that you can walk in the power that God has given you. We're just so excited that you've joined us again for yes. another conversation about power in our discussion on PMS, power, money, and sex. Yay, See you yay. next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.